And now we're getting ready to mix the base coat. We're mixing the color. It's going to be a black base coat. So we're getting ready to mix that color. Actually, he's mixing the color in now. We got about five gallons of base coat going down. 200 square feet a gallon. And we're gonna get ready for that in just a minute. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. This is Mike here. Now me and the crew yep. are getting ready to install our polyaspartic flake coating. That's Darren right there. He, he's usually the mixer. And then he dumps the product out. That's Luke in the background. There's Tia here today. And I'm right there kind of cutting in edges under that oil tank. So a crew of four when doing these floors makes things really, really nice. It actually makes things pretty easy. You know, when you got a couple people cutting in, you got one guy dedicated to mixing and one guy on the 18 inch roller and then throw in flake. Um, these floors go pretty fast. Now I'm going to be talking a little bit about cost at the end of the video. What's a floor like this cost to do? This floor, if you haven't seen the prep video for it, I'll link it at the end of the video, but this garage floor was in pretty rough shape, had a lot of spalling, a lot of chips and divots, and a lot of cracks. And we repaired all of them. I showed you how I repaired all of them. And that's kind of, kind of, it's kind of normal up here in Maine on a lot of these older garage floors to have you know, quite a bit of repair to them. So it, we can make a, a floor that's in really rough shape look like brand new look like a showroom floor when we're done you know just knowing how to do them how to fix repairs and the products to use and then uh you know just the experience about how to do it and make it make it a worthwhile type job to do so if you're wondering if your floor looks pretty bad if it's in pretty rough shape can it be fixed can it be made to look like new this video and the prep video you can watch afterwards is going to show you uh, just what you can do to your garage floor so the customer the customer picked out the flake on this this isn't one of our stock flakes so we when they don't have any when they don't like anything we have in stock we can turn them on to a website where they can go pick out right from the company the flake they want and then we have to special order it that is an extra charge we charge extra for that for special order stuff because it's more than likely we'll never use this flake again and we always have to order enough flake to make sure we we do the job so there's usually always some left over and then there's some flake that you recover when you when you broadcast flake to rejection like we're doing That's what you want the flake to look like. You don't want any like wet spots, like shiny spots like this coming up through the flake. If if it looks dull like that, like the flake looks dry, then you know you've got enough coverage. If you start seeing some wet spots, then you just throw a little more flake on it. It'll be hard to see the nuts and bolts when he drops them now. So that's what I mean by throwing the flake to rejection, you know, throwing enough flake into the base coat that the base coat doesn't doesn't expose itself up through the flake. Um, now, after we get done, after we scrape it, vacuum it, and top coat it, you will get, you will be able to see like tiny parts of the base coat through the flake. But for now, you know, we want to completely cover it. That and that black base coat, that isn't a normal base coat we use. I mean, usually we'll use a gray or a tan for base coat. You know, most people pick flakes that have some grays, some whites, maybe a little bit of black in it, or some tans and browns. So the black base coat was kind of a, a special order thing too. <laughs> but you can see how that goes down. It goes down really nice. Now the comment I made about the nuts and bolts, the, the, guy, the guy that owns this works on a lot of vehicles in here. So, I mean, if he, if he drops something on this flake, 
it's probably going to be a little difficult to find just because of the darkness of it. But it is coming out really, really nice. It's just these are the colors they wanted, so these are the colors we gave them. So Darren's our mixer. He's We're using our PolyArmor 70 we get from Deco Crete Supply in Ohio. We really like this product. We can use it. We can we can mix the pigment pack into the PolyArmor 70 to get the base coat, and then we can use the same PolyArmor 70 for the top coat. They have this, and the 70 stands for the solids count in it. The 70 is actually their faster drying one. They have an 80, they have a 90, and they have a 100. If you want to use them for a little bit higher solids, a little bit slower curing times. A lot of times what we like to do is if we can, is do these jobs in a day. And it's possible, it's possible to do them in a day if there's not like a lot of repair to do. If we can just come in and, and grind the floor, clean it, prep it without hardly any repair, then we can get right onto the base coat and flake. And that usually cures up. This what we're doing right now usually cures up in about an hour and a half. Then we can get back on it and do the finishing process which is scraping it you'll see that here in a minute but scraping it vacuuming it putting the top coat down right now i mean we're just we're just moving along we like mixing small kits at a time that do uh, you know a certain amount of square feet so we can just continually have a wet edge we don't like to get too much of the product rolled out at once before we flake into it we want to make sure the the base coat is really good and tacky, you know, still good and wet when we broadcast the flake into it. So the flake really settles down into the base coat and we don't have any like light spots. I mean, if you wait too long, the base coat, which is also the primer coat, could sink down into the, the concrete a little bit too much and just not be quite as sticky or as tacky as in other places and you get what we call like lighter looking spots after you flake it after you scrape it and vacuum it and we don't want that that's why we're going in these we mix small kits that only go a certain amount of square feet and that you know we have that all measured out on the wall to make sure we get the same coverage throughout the whole floor and then the, the process continues you Luke generally does the 18 inch roller you know and I'll I generally do the flake and then Tia, who's helping us out, is doing the you know most of the edges, and Darren will just mix and help cut in edges when he can. On this garage, we're actually going outside the garage doors on the little part that tips down. That's kind of an option for the homeowner whether they want to do that or just leave it the plain looking concrete when the when the doors are closed. Some people don't want the colored flake look on the outside of the garage doors when the doors are closed because you know the flake might not really match the outside of the house or the siding or the trim color so they don't want that kind of funny looking but these people wanted it to come outside and that's basically how i finish up the flake right there so this is the, the next process i think we actually came back the next day for this because we weren't in like a crazy hurry to get this done and we were pretty close to the shop so we'll just grab some floor scrapers, and just lightly go over it, and that's kind of how we, we get rid of all that excess flake right there. And then we can save that. We could use it over again if we, if we need to. There's nothing wrong with that flake. All right, so we get everything scraped. We always scrape north to south and east to west, so we get it scraped two ways, and that, that really flattens the flake out and gets any little sharp pieces that are sticking up nice and flat and smooth. Well, this is perfect now. And the next thing we do is we, uh, you know, obviously pick up whatever loose flake we can when we're scraping. But now we'll vacuum up anything that's left over, get everything really nice and clean, and get get it ready for the top coat. So this, you know, generally one person will go around the edges, and then one person will do the body of the floor, just a little bit faster that way. It'll take us a few minutes, and then we're going to get right on this top coat. So we'll be back with you in just a couple minutes. So right after you vacuum, it's always a good idea just to take your little blower and just blow over the floor real quick, see if you missed any. It's kind of easy to miss a few spots, everything blends in. So that's what we like to do anyway, it just helps keep the, any loose flake from sticking to the roller when you're rolling the top coat on. Um, you're going to get 99% of them this way, but you're always going to have a couple little loose ones here and there and that's not really going to bother much. 
But this is how we do it. Get a couple vacuums going, get a person with a blower, and we clean these floors up pretty quick, get them ready for the top coat. All right, so we're using the Poly Armor 70, which is the same as the base coat, but just clear for the top coat. Mixing one to one ratio. He's mixing in there trailer because there's shade in there. We don't want to mix in the sun. We got, we're going down at 130 square feet a gallon with this. So a little thicker than the base coat. We got everything measured out. It's 27 feet across. So 130 is about 27 by five. So I got my five foot marks with the blue tape every five feet. So that's kind of what we're shooting for here. We'll be cutting in the edges, rolling the edges, and using the 18 of the body. Alright, so if we want to talk about cost a little bit, like what's it cost to have something like this done? I mean, in order, in order to get a really, really nice job that's going to last for years and years, you know, you're going to have to pay a little bit of money for that because... You wanna you wanna hire somebody that really knows what they're doing that can handle problems like the prep on this one. You know, once you watch that prep video, you'll see what I mean. There was a lot, a lot of repair on this one. Now, not all of them have that repair, but uh, the cost. You know, there's as far as equipment goes to do this and do it right. You know, you need the grinders, you need the the, the HEPA vacuums, the seven inch grinders we use. You know, they got these big diamond cup wheels on them. The four and a half five inch grinders we use the diamond cup wheels and then we got walk behind grinders big walk behind grinders you know that also use diamonds so you the right having the right equipment having the right vacuums to get the prep done first and then as far as any repair materials you know you want to use really good repair materials that are going to last that won't that won't um fail underneath the coating so you want the coating and the repair materials to kind of agree with each other and then you want to use really good coatings I mean the polished products we use are good they're expensive but they last a long long time so for us you know typically the cost is for a garage without a ton of repair it's between 750 and 850 a square foot to do everything to do the prep to do the coating you know materials labor travel all that stuff and then if there's a lot of repair like this one, we'll add another dollar to a dollar fifty a square foot. So it could get up to around ten bucks a square foot to have a garage like this done. But as you can see what it looks like, it comes out looking like showroom after. Alright, that's the finished look right there. That's gonna cure up, dry up, it's gonna look nice and shiny just like that. Went on about 140, 150 square feet a gallon, so a little bit thinner than 130. But it still felt really good. We, we scraped the flake really flat, so that's why we got just a little bit more coverage out of it. So we'll tell them to stay off it for a few days, and then they can get in here and start using it again. Hey, everyone. If you'd like to learn more about how to install these garage floor flake coatings using polyaspartics or using epoxy, I've got my course right here. You can check it out. There's a link for it down in the description. I have many uh, on-the-job training from how to prep the floor, how to repair the floor, how to put the base coat and flake down, how to do the top coat. So this is where you can learn if you just want to do your own floor or if you want to maybe get into this as a business, then you have access to me too for all kinds of questions, for estimates, for bidding and all that stuff. So this is where you can go. There's a link for it down in the description. Go check it out and we'll see you inside the course, guys.